Wozo's ghost came about as the result of a breakfast in Chicago in the early 90s. At that period of time, the Greater Miami Opera and the Chautauqua Opera and the Memphis Opera, which I ran at that period of time, did joint auditions in New York and Chicago. And it was a great way for us to hear, you know, two, three hundred young artists together. And we were sitting around at breakfast, just imagining what happens to various operatic characters. You know, what happens to uh, the, the family, the Germain family after La Traviata is over? You know, do the father and the son, you know, never speak to each other again? Or do they, does the death of Violetta bring them close? Uh, what happens to um, uh, Chocho-san's child? Is is Kate Pinkerton a really good mom or is she horrible? I mean, what what happens in those kinds of things? Because whenever we're involved in a, any kind of, I don't know, a book or a, or a play or a movie or an opera and we fall in love with the characters, we want to know what happens to them. We, we want to know. It. And so sequels is just a natural, almost human instinct. So one of the things we came up with at that breakfast was, well, what happens to Johnny Skiki? What happens in that story? And so that was the genesis, the germ of the idea. And because uh, at that point in time, the, the Linda Jackson, who ran the Chautauqua Opera, said, hey, if you if you write this, I'll, I'd be happy to put it on or workshop it. Then we had a way to possibly make it happen. And so it went through. A workshop at that point in time at Chautauqua. Unfortunately, there was nothing but a firm handshake about producing the opera at Chautauqua, and um, there was a regime change. And you know what happens when regime change happens is all of the artistic projects of the previous regime get thrown out without any consideration. That almost always happens. And so we were left with you know, pretty nice finished product that that needed a premiere. And so what happened then is that another Florida Grand Opera former staffer by the name of Patrick Hansen stepped in and said he was at the Pittsburgh Opera Center at the time, which was the uh, educational with the young artist wing of the Pittsburgh Opera. And he said that, OK, well, they'll premiere it along with my company, Opera Memphis. So we had two companies that essentially premiered it in the middle 90s. And then after that point in time, it's actually taken off very nicely uh, between college and professional opera companies.